Okay, everybody, now that I'm done talking about that clock, now it's time to talk about this thing. What we have here is a Tostis one cup coffee maker. It has got to be one of the most smallest coffee makers that I've ever owned in my entire life. It is actually one of the smallest coffee makers that I own in this house. We have a Mr. Coffee slash Keurig. Uh, Mr. Coffee and Keurig are both the same company. And uh, yeah, it, it's a medium sized coffee maker, probably about, about that, that tall. We have a six cup coffee maker and it's taller. This one is just a one cup and functions the same way as a Keurig machine would, except for a Keurig coffee maker would um, boil the water for one minute and then pour it all out instantly. This one acts like a, a standard household coffee maker where you would have to sit and wait for these tiny little driplets of water to finish dripping. I know waiting sucks, but hey, it's free and I'm happy. I've actually wanted one of these things for quite some time because there's a small spot right there. Even on the old desk, I wouldn't be able to fit a giant coffee maker. This was the perfect size. And it just fits right there for convenience. And I hate this bloody chair. So, anyway. Where did I get it from? Well, it was a gift from my grandmother. Um, she actually ended up buying a coffee percolator. It's a General Electric coffee percolator. And it's not one of the old classic ones like this. I so happen to have one. This one you would fill up with water, put it on the stove, and wait for it to boil. And that's what it looks like. The coffee grounds would sit in here, the hot water would go up that little hole, up that pipe, and then you can see where that hole is, and the coffee grounds would get soaked, come out through those little holes, uh, uh, the coffee water, and uh, yeah. I hope I've explained that easily enough, but this is what they would have used back in 1912 on the Titanic. They would perk coffee on the stove, and they would carry it around and say, coffee miss or coffee sir. This one serves 10 cups. So this is the biggest one that can serve the most coffee in this house. But it's not electric though. The one that my grandmother has, you just plug in, and it's all stainless steel by the way, and it, it acts like a real coffee maker. You just put the grounds in there, the water in, it starts perking the coffee, hot water with coffee mixed into it, shoots on that glass. Exit, exits through the, uh, the basket and then shoots back up again and it will do that for about five minutes and then it will just keep the coffee hot all day until you decide to turn it off. This one you'd have to keep your stove on all day which eh, isn't really convenient for anyone anymore. So, And I would use this for for any guests that would come over. But I barely have any friends coming over anymore. They've all moved away. They've all stopped talking to me. I, not for hate reasons or anything, but just... Hmm, it happens once in a while. You have friends and then slowly drift apart. That's how it happens. For me, I try to make as many friends as I can. I would like to have guests over any time. You know, like, I'm... Always happy to meet new people and serve coffee or tea or hot chocolate even. Compliments of V Cam Nawa. But 
like I said, barely anyone shows up anyway. So that's why I got this little thing. And I didn't even have to pay for it, so who could pass up on that deal? Now, I've only used this thing about four times. And after each use, I would put a little bit of water and vinegar in it. And I would just clean it out. And I would also dry, uh, dry it out just to prevent any bacteria or mold growth or anything like that. You know, I, I want this thing to last me. It, I use it for coffee, tea, hot chocolate, or just boiling water, you know? If I have a cold, I'll just boil some water and put some neocitrin in there. It's a lemon drink that tastes horrible to me. I don't like neocitrin. It's really gross. And, uh, yeah. Now, it's funny to me because the way I brew my coffee, um, I don't really use this basket. Well, you've already seen that it, it's stained. Um, my grandmother never used this thing. This is what happened after I used it four times. It's already starting to form stress cracks everywhere. Like, the basket is literally cracking from the hot water. And really, ugh, I don't want any plastic breaking off and ruining my coffee maker. Or I don't want to swallow any plastic shards. That's one thing I would like to avoid. So, this is how I brew my coffee. Um, Instant coffee, it's okay, but really, it, it, it's kind of gross. I wouldn't mind drinking instant coffee, but I only only do that probably once in a while. But I'm mostly a tea person or hot chocolate person. What I would do is I would fill the tank up with hot water or usually cold water. I would have the instant coffee sitting in there, and I would let it brew. Boom, Bob's your uncle. You get instant coffee. And you won't have to clean up a mess in here. For hot chocolate, I do the same thing. I don't put the hot chocolate in this basket because I'll have a real mess to clean up. I just put the powder in here, brew it, hot water comes out, and there. Another reason why I do this is because after brewing coffee, and if I want, oh, let's just say, a cup of tea or a hot chocolate, all I'll be tasting is just coffee. That's it. I. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. I don't like drinking hot chocolate or tea every time when I use this thing. All I'll get is just coffee flavor. So that's why I'm not gonna put coffee in this thing. Another reason why I don't like putting coffee in this is because you have to be really precise on how many scoops you put in. It won't overflow or anything, but you're not sure if the coffee is gonna be strong or weak. Now, you could do this, you could, if you decide to use this for um, just coffee purposes only, you could buy one of those Keurig K-Cups, which um, are already measured out for you. And this is the same size cup as you would use on a Keurig. Just pour the coffee grounds in here from the little cup. Turn this little uh, spout, shut the lid, boom, done. You won't have to measure off anything. Um, it beats buying a 100 and something dollar Keurig machine, but I think they were like, like 89 something on Boxing Day here in Canada. But I didn't, I didn't buy one, but my mother did, and she's loving it. For me, 
all I care about is this little thing. And, uh, yeah. So, you guys know that I won't be using this for any coffee purposes because, like I said, I don't want my tea or hot chocolate tasting like coffee. And usually you'll get that a lot if you get a used coffee maker. If you decide to use it for the same purpose as I am, all you'll be tasting is coffee and that's it. And yeah. So let's test this baby out. Now I'm going to be using bottled water because it's fil uh, filtered. I don't... Um, I used to have a water cooler in here and it used to sit right where that dresser is. And, well, clearly, there was a leak in it and my carpet started to smell really funny and I had to get rid of that water cooler. But the water was always fresh and cold. It was amazing. I loved it so much, <laughs> I was so upset to get rid of it. I went and talked to my mother for a couple of days because I was that mad about it. It was her idea for me to get rid of it. And, eh, since she's the one to blame for that, I just went and talked to her for a few days and she said, oh, that's pathetic. I know it's pathetic to get mad at your mom for getting rid of the water cooler, but it, it definitely beats making trips upstairs to the kitchen sink. Now, this isn't gonna be easy. Pouring water into this coffee maker. Because it always dribbles out the side. Oh, I got lucky this time. Woohoo! Kick ass. Okay. I have red rose tea. Plunk. And just push it right there and done. Now when I'm making hot chocolate, it's a real pain in the ass because the water drops and it splashes everywhere. I don't know if you can see this, but you can clearly see that it's dirty under there. I have to clean it still. But did I turn that handle the right way? Yep, I did. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. I'm just gonna, you know, plunk it there until I figure out what I want to do with it. I'm gonna start this computer up um, soon. And the Redneck IBM computer. So clearly, there's no, um, no colored water coming out, coffee or anything like that. Just plain hot water. And yeah. Now, I would use hot water. Um, I just pour hot water in the back, but since I want to uh, let this thing last me, I'm trying to use bottled water. But I would prefer to use hot water because it would make it really, really hot. Like, it would, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, this thing doesn't really keep drinks really hot, so I try to put really, really hot water in. But yeah, let's see. Yep, see, it's already doing its, its job. I think this will take about a minute, and I'm close to the 15 minute mark. But yeah, I don't know why I filled this cup up with, with so much milk. I only take a little bit of milk and take a little bit of sugar, which is starting to clump up for some reason. Yep, I may be a fat person, but really, I don't make my teas really, really sweet, or they would hurt my tooth. I already got a filling put in. My dentist was pissed off with me, and I said, hey, it's not your mouth, why should you be pissed off? You're the one who's getting paid to fuck around with my teeth. We'll be right back with part two.